This is the story of one of the greatest mass migrations in the history of the Earth. Seventy million years ago, giants roam at the top of the world. At this prehistoric North Pole, summers are warm, a chance for hatchling dinosaurs to fatten their bellies, unaware their safe and happy world is about to change forever. As winter sets in, plants will shrivel and die, temperatures will plummet, and four months of darkness will engulf the land as night hunters stalk the weak. Winter at the North Pole is a death trap with just one way out, an epic annual crossing of a continent. 1,000 miles of hostile territory lie ahead in a do or die march south to find the sun. Summer's day, 70 million years ago. The Arctic, but not the icy landscape we know. The Earth is a much warmer place, and in summer, round-the-clock sunlight supercharges the forest vegetation. It's a fertile feast for some of the planet's biggest and hungriest creatures, dinosaurs. Thousands of vegetarian dinosaurs come here for the endless supply of food. Some are solitary, like this spiky ankylosaur. But most are herd animals, like these at Montosaurus. This is one of the youngest members of the Edmontosaurus herd, Scar, although he hasn't earned his name yet. When he hatched here in the spring, Scar weighed no more than a bag of sugar, but he has thrived under the protection of his extended family and is on his way to becoming a three-ton adult. The Arctic provides light, warmth, and all he can eat. Everything is going his way. But Scar will find out there's a price to pay. Though the summer brings 24-hour sunlight, it will soon fade and 24-hour darkness will take its place. There are signs that summer is already letting go, meaning tougher times for every dinosaur in the forest. The most common predators here are Troodon. This is Patch, a young male. He spent the summer feeding on baby Edmontosaurus. But now Scar and his friends have grown too big, and Patch must look for other game. Come <laughs> on. 
Troodon are among the most intelligent dinosaurs. But Patch is just too young to have mastered the subtle arts of hunting. He knows that what goes in must come out. But he hasn't learned to cover all the exits. Unlike this fully grown Troodon, Patch needs to sharpen up his act in a hurry. The clock is ticking. The summer sun is dying fast. And as winter approaches, the Arctic will start to show its true colors. The perpetual daylight is finally retreating, and as the shadows lengthen, the danger grows. Now he must deal with a threat he's never faced before. Nightfall. For Edmontosaurus, darkness is danger. They can no longer see predators coming. This is no time to be away from the herd. Luckily, the first night of fall lasts just a moment. The danger of surprise attack fades with the dawn. Scar is wounded, but safely back in the sanctuary of the watchful herd. From now on, the coming winter will steal a bit more light from every passing day. So for these herbivores, every night 
will be more dangerous. Soon, the sun will disappear completely. Then the herd must leave on a great march south to find enough food and light to survive the winter. As fall turns to winter and the nights lengthen, the forest begins to wither and die. The competition for what's left is about to get much tougher. The Edmontosaurus males bellow a warning to the herd. Danger approaches. Another dinosaur is here in force. Pachyrhinosaurus, two-ton vegetarian headbangers. The brains inside these thick skulls are no bigger than a bird's but their reinforced heads make excellent battering rams. For Edmontosaurus, a formidable rival in the life or death struggle for food. Troodon have evolved to survive the cold, dark winters, but they must make the most of autumn before some of the smaller prey hibernate. And Patch is still a beginner at the killing game. Troodon's brain is wired for high-speed pursuit. Like a bird of prey, it's as if he sees in slow motion. But even with his amazing eyesight, some meals are just too quick for him. For Scar, the days of plenty are over. To survive the long march south, he must now hunt out every last scrap of nourishment from the dying forest. The armored ankylosaur shows how. She is an old hand at survival and is eating rotten wood an unlikely source of nutrition, but the insect larvae within provide enough protein to keep her three-ton bulk going. A far cry from a diet of leaves and soft plants.
Scar is hungry for the first time in his life. The lush summer paradise is now a distant memory, and the time to leave will soon be upon them. As every night stretches longer than the last, it's the predators that now have the upper hand. The adults corral their young, their own bodies forming the last line of defense against the unseen terrors they know are out there. Scar is now living in a world of fear. Nothing will entice him to venture outside the herd's protection again. Nothing. Except perhaps a scrap of food. For one young female, the compulsion to eat is more than she can bear. Gorgosaurus, T-Rex's North Pole cousin. The consummate nocturnal killer. The young dinosaur never stood a chance. For herbivores, daylight can't come too soon. Starvation and predators have turned their summer playground into a winter killing field. Their only hope, Exodus. shortening day finally signals to the herd the onset of the great annual migration. It's time to head south towards the sun in a grueling trek to find food and safety. Leaving the desolation of the Arctic forest and the predators behind. Only the herd's dead will remain.
The Edmontosaurus will spend 15 hours a day on the move. The youngest, barely strong enough for the journey. The three-month odyssey will lead the youngsters through perilous terrain, but with the herd to guide them, many will endure. Across the Arctic, Edmontosaurus hear the call, coming together for safety in numbers. Even rival herds of Pachyrhinosaurus join the jostling masses. The march of the dinosaurs has begun. The Great Migration will descend the Western Peninsula through what is now the Northwest Territories of Canada to Alberta. Their destination, the fertile coast of the inland sea that divides North America. The prize, a haven of food, light, and warmth. But right now, they still have a thousand miles to go. For some herbivores, there is no escape. This cumbersome ankylosaur is too slow and heavy for such a strenuous expedition. She must remain at the pole to endure the ravages of winter. As food supplies dwindle, predators will be competing for every hunk of meat. The Troodon are taking a big risk by feeding on the Gorgosaurus's kill. But this carcass may provide the last big meal for months. Patch is well down the pecking order, hoping for a few scraps at best. At worst, his own carcass will form tomorrow's leftovers. Gorgosaurus rules this forest. Nobody steals his food. But in winter, some prizes are worth fighting for.
luckless adult inflicts a savage bite. But he who strikes the king must strike to kill, or pay the price. After one week, the migrating herds break the edge of the Arctic forest. So far, Scar is keeping up with the herd. But this open landscape is a hostile new world. They're exposed to the elements beneath a sky that holds unfamiliar threats. Scavengers who know that this journey will soon start taking its toll. A few hours later, the sky has another surprise. Scar has never seen snow before. But the first flakes rapidly become a blizzard. To cope with the freezing temperatures, they have to keep moving at all costs. Youngsters like Scar are the most vulnerable. Their small bodies easily overwhelmed abandon any that fall behind to die alone in the wilderness. The arrival of a hardy veteran spurs the greenhorn into action. With 20 winter migrations behind him, this adult has been through it all before. He provides some shelter from the weather and sets a pace the youngster can follow. But the old timer has his own troubles. has a brain tumor. This may be his last migration. Behind them, the blizzard brings even colder temperatures to the dinosaurs left in the north. Patches feathers not quite enough to keep the biting chill at bay. Cold is not his only problem. He's still not eaten properly. And he needs to be in peak condition for what's in store. He's about to go head-to-head -head with the older males 
in the most important challenge of his life. This time, it's not about food. It's each male for himself in an annual ritual that every adult takes part in. It's the nesting season. In these conditions, it's hard enough looking after number one. But Patch must now also prepare for a family. First step, attract a mate. Two hundred miles to the south, thousands of tons of determined dinosaur have battled through the blizzard. But in the blinding whiteout, they've strayed completely off course and into deep trouble. The freezing water will kill even a huge dinosaur in minutes. But that's not all. Monstrous predators lurk in the deep. In the far north, the ankylosaur is toughing it out as best she can. <coughs> Survival means foraging alone around the clock, seeking out scraps in the deepest corners of the forest where she may find more than she bargained for.
In winter, even a small injury can have deadly consequences. A fight could kill them both. The Gorgosaurus hasn't got the stomach for it. The Troodon bite on his leg is now infected. He must rest and hope a better opportunity comes his way. The dinosaurs left in the Arctic are about to endure the deepest phase of winter. Once the sun sets, it will not re-emerge until four long months have passed. This is the beginning of the longest night on Earth. Some may not live to see another day. The Edmontosaurus herd has been heading south for almost a month. They've left the snowstorms and perpetual darkness behind them. But a herd marches on its stomach, and they're now running on empty. Starvation and exhaustion have already cut down the weakest. Here, no life is ever wasted. The Quetzalcoatlus is the biggest flying animal of all time, with a wingspan the length of a school bus. They have a taste for dinosaur meat. The migration is their movable feast. At last, a tiny oasis of green in the barren wilderness. Scar gets his reward for fighting his way so far. But there are too many mouths to feed. The Pachyrhinosaurus want the plants for themselves. Hunger drives one Edmontosaurus to fight his corner. A broken rib cage means a slow death for the desperate animal. But for the migrating herd, there is no looking back.
the Admontosaurus continue south. To the west, a massive collision of continental plates is giving birth to the Rocky Mountains. This is the most dangerous part of the herd's journey so far. Uh, uh. As the land twists and buckles, volcanic eruptions blanket a huge area with ash, killing the plant life and any chance of a meal. And now, more trouble is stirring. In the distance, another cloud of ash pumps into the sky, the atmosphere charged with electricity and menace. Fine volcanic dust coats the lungs and masks the telltale scent of approaching predators. Albertosaurus is the dominant carnivore of the region. Like Gorgosaurus, they are close relatives of T. rex. In a hunting pack, the average member is three tons of teeth and stealth. It's been months since their last proper meal. The pack keeps a yearly vigil for the arrival of migrating herbivores. The winter feast will soon be served. In the frozen north, Patch's head feathers have turned yellow, marking him out to females as ready to breed. The more experienced males are doing what they do every year, building nests to attract a mate. To succeed, Prospective fathers must first prove their homemaking skills. This adult has found a highly desirable location, shelter from the freezing wind. But Patch has completely missed the point. His spot is far too exposed. His next lesson comes with the arrival of a female. The courtship ritual begins. Patch is losing out in the battle for her attention. But at least he's willing to learn the moves. Bye. 
The older male closes the deal by putting dinner on the table, proving he has the skills for bringing up baby. Patch fails to get the girl, but there's always next time. To the south, the migration of the Edmontosaurus herd keeps them just ahead of the deadly zone of permanent darkness. The herds have now walked 600 miles, more than halfway to journey's end in the southern forests. But there is fresh danger on every new horizon. The whole herd is now heading for a narrow pass through the rocky terrain. For a good many, this is as far as they will get. Because they're walking into an ambush. At the lip of the volcano, ice is no match for fire. The cap of snow has melted to create a monstrous cascade of water, ash, and rock, gathering unstoppable momentum as it falls.
The young Edmontosaurus has battled through adversity once more. But he's lost the most important thing in his life, the herd. The volcanic torrent has set like concrete. A desolate blanket over Scar's new world of total isolation. If the herd has survived, it has moved on. But Scar is not alone for long. helped him through the blizzard. But nearby, an old enemy refuses to lie down and die. In the high Arctic, perpetual night has reigned for six weeks. This adult male Troodon has eggs to look after. He will not feed again until they hatch in the spring. Patch's nest is empty. The young Troodon has so far failed to mate. All he has to show for his efforts is a consuming hunger. 
he soon smells an opportunity. The scent of blood draws him in. Hampered by his bad leg, the Gorgosaurus now waits for small prey to come to him. But the injury is healing, and it won't be long before he's ready to spread terror through the forest once again. Not far away in the winter dark, the Ankylosaur, As ever, she's searching out whatever vegetation she can find. Far to the south, Scar and his veteran companion are in a desperate hunt for their herd. After days of fruitless plodding in the volcanic wastelands, fresh evidence of another dinosaur This injured female, Pachyrhinosaurus, is also separated from her migrating herd. The old Edmontosaurus struggles to take in this vital nourishment. His behavior is becoming more erratic as his tumor grows. He's not in good shape.
thrown together through disaster. They are a band of the young, the ill, and the injured. But the next day brings hope. Vast numbers of Edmontosaurus still soldier on, a moving fortress that will provide safety for the stragglers, as long as they reach it in time. As the short day ends, they've fallen even further behind. The Pachyrhinosaurus can't keep pace. The Edmontosaurus must abandon the injured animal to her fate. Scar's confused companion now does the unthinkable, veering aimlessly off the beaten track. Scar senses something is wrong, but to follow is in his nature. The veteran stops to gather his strength. The pair are exhausted. I must find shelter from the chill winter wind. Normally, these animals would huddle together for warmth. But not this time. It's a shock for Scar. One of his own has turned on him. He is bewildered and confused. And wounded. Back at the North Pole, a warm weather front passes through, raising the temperature above freezing for the first time in weeks. The snow crust has softened, an opportunity for Patch to master another of his highly specialized hunting skills. Using his ears, not his eyes, his hearing is so sharp that it can target prey with uncanny accuracy.
even under two feet of snow. He's finally maturing into a master hunter. Perhaps he will soon be ready to prove his mettle in the mating game. The ankylosaur has been trapped on her back for three days. With her armor useless beneath her, she exposes her softer underbelly. Troodon are wary, but their numbers are growing. still has the strength to defend himself. But he is hopelessly exposed in this wasteland. His old companion has wandered off. He no longer offers any protection or guidance. Unfortunately, he's the only ally Scar's got. turns to his one-time savior. But he's wasting his time. Yeah. <laughs> 
Scar is alone once more. In the high Arctic, the Troodon are getting braver by the minute. These are tenacious predators, and the Ankylosaur hasn't got a lot of fight left. Even Patch is getting up the courage to approach. Finally, the Troodon lose all caution. But in their feeding frenzy, the Troodon forget to leave room for a top predator. It's a crushing blow for the king of the forest. One there's no coming back from. The tables have turned. In the south, Scar has been slogging along the wilderness for three days, with only a frustrated scavenger for company. With every step, he becomes weaker and more vulnerable. But every step has also brought him closer to sanctuary.
he has found the herd. But they have already crossed this river, and it's cost them dear. If the river doesn't get him, the Quetzalcoatlus will. The injured Pachyrhinosaurus Scar once left behind. Despite everything, she's also made it this far. Scar follows her lead. The grubs will give them vital strength before the perilous river crossing. With an armored giant to shelter behind, he's no longer the easy target he was. The Pachyrhinosaurus knows the safest way to get across. As part of a herd, Scar must now face the biggest challenge of his life. His companions almost as dangerous as the predators in the water. Pronathodon is the most efficient underwater killer of its time. Crushing jaws and conical teeth can hold even the biggest prey under to drown them. If Scar waits, he will starve or get picked off later crossing alone. It's now or never.
very few Edmontosaurus young live long enough to see the end of their first migration. Scar has emerged as a true survivor. he rejoins the herd, having earned his place among the most indomitable dinosaurs on Earth. They've marched over a thousand miles in the greatest adversity to reach a land of winter refuge. with just enough food to last until spring. When at last, the sun will return to the North Pole. Bringing back a feast of plenty. None will go hungry. And new parents will bring the next generation of dinosaurs into the world. And then the herds will set off once again on the march north, back to the summer paradise, where for each and every one of them, the great journey began.